Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Unit 1 Lesson 5 video and we are on Section 6 in our notes which talks about the different states or phases of matter. And there's really four phases. There's also a plasma phase, but we really we don't talk about that much in chemistry because that only occurs under extreme circumstances. And we're not performing chemical reactions and changes under extreme circumstances. So we'll talk about the three most common phases. And I like this little video animation here because it gives you an idea of what those phases look like. If you could put on what I call your Miss Frizzle glasses and zoom in and actually see what the atoms were doing in a solid, they would be doing this. Notice that the atoms are locked together in a rigid state and all they're really doing is vibrating in place. Okay, in the liquid phase, there's more motion. Okay, the atoms are not as, uh, not as rigid, not as in a regular geometric pattern like they are in the solid phase. I like to think of the atoms within a liquid as kind of ballroom dancing, bouncing off one another. Um, not moving crazy, but there's still way more movement than in the solid. And in the gas phase, it's kind of like um, pinballs in a pinball machine, or if a bunch of people were throwing marbles at each other, right? The atoms are going crazy, they're bouncing off one another, they're spreading out and taking up the whole volume of their container. So in this section, we're going to talk about uh, the different properties of the atoms in a solid, a liquid, and a gas, and what elements on the periodic table exist as solids, liquids, and gases at what we call STP. So let's list those elements first, and then we'll get on to the different properties. So gases are the easiest. On my periodic table in the classroom, the gases all have their element symbols in red. So these are, we're going to give the uh, phases that each element exists in at STP. And STP stands for standard temperature and pressure. It's actually zero degrees Celsius um, and one atmosphere of pressure. Because obviously if you change the temperature, the elements can change phase. They can melt or boil or whatever. And if you change the pressure, they can also change phase. So the gases are um, hydrogen. Okay, and don't worry why I'm putting this little two there right now. <coughs> Oxygen. Fluorine, chlorine, nitrogen, and then all of the very last column, which is called group 18 on the periodic table. So all the very last column, which is helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. All of those elements exist as gases at STP. Liquids are easier. On the periodic table, there's actually only two liquids at STP. One is a metal. It's mercury. And one is a non-metal. It's bromine. Bromine is a liquid. That's it. Okay. Solids, there's the most of. Everyone else at STP is a solid. So it would kind of be silly for you to memorize who's a solid. Just memorize your two liquids, your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 gases, and then everyone else is a solid at STP. Okay? Now, what are their properties then? Oops. Okay. So let's talk about the arrangement of molecules um, or atoms, the movement, the forces of attraction, and whether or not they have a definite shape or volume. And I know much of this will be reviewed from like 7th or 8th grade whenever y'all did physical science. So arrangement of molecules, if you could put on your Miss Frizzle glasses, and I'm going to say or atoms. We'll talk about the difference between those two terms as well. But uh, solids are arranged very regularly. They're the only phase of matter that has a regular geometric arrangement, and we call that geometric arrangement a crystalline structure. They are packed tightly together, right? The atoms in the solid phase are tightly packed. In the liquid phase, there's a random arrangement. They're not as tightly packed together, so there's no specific place that the atoms have to be in. And then the gas is also a random arrangement of atoms. They're more spread out. And so what's 
in between gas atoms is actually nothing, right? Complete emptiness or complete void. The atoms are very spread out. So most of the volume of a gas is actually empty space. It's not occupied by atoms or molecules. Movement of molecules actually has a term in chemistry. You may have heard it before, you may not have heard it before. It's called, and I think you should write that in, kinetic energy. Okay, oops. Well, you can replace it too if you'd like. I didn't mean to do that, but that's okay. It's the movement of molecules. And so if you could look at the solid phase, the atoms really don't move very much. All they do is vibrate in position. Okay, they vibrate in place. The atoms or molecules do not move relative to each other. They don't swap places. They only vibrate in place. Okay, kinetic energy actually is defined as energy of motion. So we would say then that the solids have very low kinetic energy. Okay, Ke for kinetic energy. Liquids, it's like slow dancing at the homecoming dance. It's very little motion, you know, they just kind of, um, or ballroom dance, if you will. They do vibrate and they can spin and rotate. They can move relative to each other, but it is not a mosh pit, okay? It's relatively slow. But there is more kinetic energy than a solid. They have more motion than a solid. And then finally, gases are like pinballs bouncing off each other or, like I said, a mosh pit. Uh, they bounce off each other, they bounce off the walls of their container, they have the highest kinetic energy. <coughs> okay? So energy of motion, we're talking about what the atoms do. And with all of these phases, the higher the temperature, the greater the kinetic energy will be also. Kinetic energy is, um, uh, uh, temperature is a measure of kinetic energy. So the highest temperature always has the greatest kinetic energy. Forces of attraction, since solid atoms are packed very tightly together, there's a reason. That means they really love each other. So they have the strongest forces of attraction that exist between the molecules, okay? Liquids have medium forces of attraction and gases have weak or no forces of attraction. Theoretically, gas molecules should hit and bounce off. They should not attract or repel, but sometimes they do, okay? Definite shape and volume, solids have both. The shape doesn't change, the volume doesn't change if you put it in a rectangle, right? Liquids have a definite volume, but the shape changes, okay? So they don't have a definite shape. And I'll show you an example of that in class. And then gases have neither. They have no definite shape and no definite volume. Gases do not have either. They take the shape and volume of their container. There's one other word that we need to define up here that um, I believe you have in your notes. If you don't, you can write it in. And it is entropy, okay? Entropy is a measure of disorder. So I'd like to just extend our, our chart here, okay? And try to come up with who has the most, which phase has the most entropy which phase has the least entropy. So if we could look at the molecules, which phase do you think has the most disorder? Okay, if you could look at the atoms, which atoms do you believe have the most disorder? And if you said gases, you would be right, good job. So gases have the highest entropy and the least disorder would be solids. And I never know what to say about liquids, but they're in between, right? So they have medium, I guess, is kind of the in between, or middle entropy. Okay, so after watching this video, you can go ahead and hit turn in, and then you'll notice that I assigned you a quiz on Edmodo to do after watching this video. It is five multiple choice questions, so you're just going to go to that assignment and click your answers, and then if it prompts you at the end, you'll click turn in, okay? And that is how I will grade whether or not you watch tonight's video is in your responses to the quiz. So now that you're done with the video, you can close out of here and you can go on and do the quiz to accompany lesson five, okay? 
Have a great night, everybody. We will see you tomorrow in class where we talk more about lab safety and we do a demonstration. Bye-bye now.